to find a way off this road that I've been traveling on, and it feels like I've walked a thousand miles, getting nowhere, getting nowhere. So what else can I do but call your name? Then I hear you whisper in the wind, saying to me, I'll carry you, I'll carry you, when the road ahead seems too long.
another breakthrough service this 27th of September uh, 2020 as we come around this video or we come to church to worship God and I know that uh, with all the restrictions that are, that are amongst us at the moment that uh, worship can feel difficult uh, for many of us in that we can't when we gather sing uh, as is our custom to sing praises to God and I pray though that we are still able to worship, that we can learn that worship can be in the quietness, if you like, that as we watch a video of music, that we can join in with that in our hearts and in our minds and in our heads, that our spirits may be lifted to the Lord in worship as we come together today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together for this breakthrough service, as your breakthrough family, as the family of God, as the body of Christ, that you would draw us together, that you would enable us afresh by your Holy Spirit to come and worship you, even if it's not how we would like to, in terms of what we are able to do at the moment. But Father, you transcend all things. And that you can do a work in our hearts where you come and you lift us to your throne of grace. So, Father, this evening we ask that you would draw us close to you in this time, wherever we are, whether we're in the church building or whether we are watching this at home. That you would draw us together in worship, in spirit and truth at this time. In Jesus name. Amen. And so let's say our word of scripture together before that music starts. From John chapter 15 verse 8 we say, this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. <laughs> Yes, Lord, although we are apart, we are still together, joined by the bond of the Spirit. All these ungodly walls that are going up at the moment, Lord, we just pray that you are here with us. You know what the future holds, Lord. So when we sing this song, we ask that you break down those barriers 
and reach out to those people that don't know you, Lord. Just let the Holy Spirit fill your ears and let the Holy Spirit come into your heart.
thank you to uh, the worship band who in this past week have come together to record some new songs for our YouTube breakthrough. That is not necessarily new songs to us. And uh, those first two uh, we've had today are part of the collection. There'll be more to come in uh, future weeks. Thank you to the worship band uh, for coming together last week. Let's pray together. Father God, we just thank you for your music. Thank you uh, for the message of those songs. Thank you that you break down dividing walls and that you have been breaking down those walls in all this time. Father, we recognise that uh, some of those walls have been the kind of the buildings that we've been hanging on to. And uh, you have broken those walls down that we might be free to serve you as your church, to be the church you have called us to be, to be the church that you empower us to be. So, Father, we ask that you would give us that spirit of freedom in you to be who you have called us to be. In Jesus' name. Amen.
is Chris. Hello. When I was praying about a week ago about what to talk about uh, today, I just had one word that came to mind and that word was fruit. I got no further than that for several days. Um, so I started thinking, well, okay, what is, why would God be wanting me to talk about fruit? And then I realised that actually it's harvest time and it's in these weeks uh, in church but also in the community we celebrate harvest, the coming in of fruit for the season and celebrating God's grace. So I thought, oh well that's clearly something that we should be talked about. Um, but then most of the week um, with what was going on around me was I was thinking really about God's grace and what what is that do we deserve it um, and so today we're going to look at um, a, a different kinds of fruit um, spiritual and um, fruit um, and how this is connected to God's grace so I thought we'd start by looking at uh, what fruit is uh, and why it is, seems is such an important uh, thing you know, in the Bible. Well, fruit looks good. Often it smells good and uh, frequently tastes good. Good fruit shows that a plant is healthy and it's well looked after. Fruit is useful. Uh, it can produce more fruit um, through uh, planting. Uh, and there are many health benefits to consuming it. A good plant produces a lot of fruit. And when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, what is the difference between fruit and seed? Uh, because often you think, well, they, they really have many of the same purposes. So I looked it up and um, I got a number of definitions, one of which is that one is an ovary and one is an ovule. Now, that was a bit technical, so uh, I passed over that. But in the same article, it um, described another characteristic, um, which is this. It says fruits are meant for attracting animals to enhance seed dispersal, while seeds are meant for the reproduction of gymnosperm and angiosperm plants. Now, that, again, a bit technical, but the key part of this is that fruits are designed to be attractive. They're designed to attract animals and that when they're attracted, the seeds can then be passed to them, and then they disperse it, and they go and, um, having been refreshed by the seed, by the fruit, then spread the seed, more seed. And that seems a wonderful spiritual um, analogy, really, as to what we're supposed to be like, um, the fruits that we're supposed to develop in us they're supposed to be attractive so we attract others and the seed can be planted the seed of grace can be planted in others now we're going to say a little bit about seed as well as uh, we go on but first of all i'd like to, to describe a few things that the bible has to say about fruit and it has a lot to say about fruit um, you know, if you want to know how to grow and look after fruit, it's in the Bible. Now, the passage we read um, at the beginning of this service, um, by this the Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, that comes at the end of a passage I'm about to read to you. Um, it's in John 15, um, and it's entitled, I am the true vine. <clears throat> so John 15, 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. 
as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown in the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So let's unpack a little bit of uh, what is in that passage. So clearly there are direct parallels between fruit growing and the Christian life. The purpose of, us, of, our, of our life here on earth is to bear fruit. And our God the Father manages the process, not us. We, our job is to abide, but his job is to do the caring. Now, I used to live uh, in a house surrounded by an apple orchard. Um, and there were basically two main visits that the farmer and his team would make each year. One was in winter um, and one was in early summer. Now, the winter visit was for pruning. Um, so there was no fruit on the trees, but it was getting them, the trees ready to bear fruit. So there will be periods in our life, for instance, where it is winter, it, it feels <laughs> tough and hard, and, and we, things may be, we may feel things are being cut off us and all sorts of things. Um, but that is part of the process. There will be periods of winter. Uh, and our job at that point is to abide, is to trust in God. And the pruning takes <clears throat> two, two stages, really. One is simply cutting off branches that are, are not fruit-bearing or, or are, are in the way. But even the good branches, the ones that are chosen to bear fruit, they are cut back so the fruit that grows is large and healthy. So there's two aspects of pruning there that it can again directly apply to us. There'll be some things that aren't needed in our life at all that God wants just to get rid of and there are other parts that are good but he needs to refine so that they can be even better. So that's one of the visits <coughs> to the orchard. The second uh, is in June and there is actually a natural process <clears throat> in apple growing called the June drop and that's where it, it, there may be a lot of fruit on the trees but if all of that fruit is left none of it will grow particularly large so the natural process is that a lot of the smaller fruit just drops off and the farmer comes around and checks this and he will then take off often more fruit more of the small fruit to allow the good fruit the big fruit to develop fully and I think that, again, is something that can affect, or can affect, can be part of our lives, that we have lots of gifts, lots of things that we think, well, this is good. And you're right, it may not be, they may, they may well be very good. Because as I don't, you know, you'll be, in order for you to focus on the, the gifts and the fruit that I want to develop, those are not necessary. And I want the best for you. So sometimes even what is good, God will want to prune off. The second um, point from this passage is this word abide, abide in me and I in you. Our job is to abide. So how do we do that? Well, actually, John uh, in this passage answers that question in the verses just after the passage I read. So John 15, 9 and 10. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So abiding means obedience. 
uh, not easy, but that's our job. So God is the vine dresser. God, God is the the farmer. God is the the our Lord who develops and works on us to build up fruit. And the Bible talks about different types of fruit. Um, we're all familiar with that passage in Galatians, which talks about the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And if we live by the Spirit, I abide in him, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another and envying one another. Now, fruit um, in this passage is singular. It doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit are. It says the fruit, singular, of the Spirit is. So all these different characteristics, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, they are one fruit. And um, it's no good us saying, well, I've got some of them, but not others. Um, so that's all right. One balances out the other. No, God wants us all to have all of these characteristics. And he will have to work harder in us in some of those areas than in others. But it's one fruit. So how, how does this fruit grow? Well, we can't make it grow. What we can do is allow him to work on us and to obey when he directs us to stop doing something or to give something up. And this is where, why we have these words here of being of crucifying the flesh with its passions and desires and not becoming conceited. And, and it's a problem, isn't it? We're designed to be fruitful. Fruit is designed to be attractive. And we naturally, therefore, uh, judge what is successful and what isn't and um, think we're good if other people compliment us for the fruit they see in us. Um, and we will talk a little bit more about that later. The second fruit, or the other fruits that we see in the Bible, are the fruits of the results of what we do. The results that come from developing and using our gifts <clears throat> and calling. Now we like our fruit to be visible, it's designed to be visible, isn't that the point? Um, and, and we judge what is successful by how much fruit we see. And so there's an inherent problem <laughs> with being fruitful is that there's a temptation to pride. There's a temptation to see it as our identity. Oh, I'm a very good musician, or oh, I'm a very good cook, or a mathematician, or whatever it is, and we see that as part of our identity, whereas in fact it's a gift, but it's not us. So what is a gift? Um, well, it, I know it's stating the obvious, a gift is something you're given. Uh, and Paul, Paul is very blunt uh, with the Corinthians. So he says in 1 Corinthians 4 verse 7, For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? So a gift is something we're given. It's not something, and, and it's not something we deserve either. And this was my, what I was really pondering this week, talking, thinking about grace. Grace isn't just being given something. Grace is the undeserved favour of God shown to us. It's when we don't deserve it, that's true grace, when we're given things that we simply don't deserve. And in reality, all of our lives <clears throat> in Christ, it's all grace. Um, and Paul speaks against, uh, again about that in Romans, doesn't he? Romans 6, verse 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, 
The fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. One of the gifts we have actually is to be a grace giver. And that means <laughs> giving things to people who don't deserve it in our judgment. <laughs> Um, and I've been learning a lot about that uh, this week where I've been working really hard with someone for a period of years and then ran out of money and then someone rang me and said Chris, you know you've talked about this uh, the people you've been working with do they need some money? and I said well yes uh, and they offered to, to a very generous sum of money and when I went back um, to my friends and said, look, someone's prepared to make this gift. It then emerged that there were some significant debts on top of what that, you know, that they'd simply never talked to me about. So this was a huge embarrassment for me. You know, I had to go back to the people making the donation and say, look, I'm sorry, if you do make this donation, um, most of it's going to be taken up in clearing debt. Um, and this is about the size of the debt. And two days later, I was rang up again. I said, Chris, we will clear the debt. We will do almost double the amount of money that we're prepared to give so these people can have a new start. <laughs> what do you think my reaction was? Well, I'm ashamed to say my reaction was I just got very angry. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't say this to these uh, <laughs> people making the donation. But I was very angry. I thought, these people... I know they're my friends, but they do not deserve to have their debts cleared in this way. It's wrong. It, it, I won't say it's wrong, but it just made me angry. And uh, I can still feel it now, <laughs> a week later. Um, but then you sit down and you think, well, actually, I've received grace. Everything I've got, I have received. But actually, this process has enabled me to see things more from God's point of view you know he he gets angry at how un, ungrateful we are about what he gives us um, but he still keeps on giving so uh, it's a wonderful privilege <laughs> to be a grace giver actually because we we come to understand more about God's graciousness and mercy towards us so how do we deal with the gifts that we've been given, these seeds that we've been given. Because gifts are like seeds, they're things that we can plant and that they can grow and develop uh, more fruit. <clears throat> and there's a clear connection between gifts and seeds and grace. Um, and just before he was arrested and crucified, Jesus spoke these words, they're very, you know, enormously powerful words in John chapter 12 verses 23 to 25 and Jesus answered them the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified truly truly I say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies it remains alone but if it dies it bears much fruit Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Now clearly Jesus was talking about himself in this passage, and that it was through his death that the seeds of life could be given to us. But this also resonates very much for us. Our gifts are like seeds. It is our job to plant these grains of wheat that we've been given but then we have to allow them to die before they can be fruitful. And this means laying them down before God, saying, I know you've given this lovely gift of intelligence, music, cooking, whatever it is, but it's your gift. And it's only by his grace that anything good can come from the seed we've been given. Um, now, sometimes... I think God gives us gifts and he really wants us to develop and use them to become fruitful. But actually he can't allow them to be used. 
and to be developed because he knows that we would be unable to handle the results of the fruit without pride and without taking it to, our, to ourselves and spoiling us. And that's why we have to lay them down. That's why the seed has to go into the ground and die. That's the giving back to God and saying, you take it and use it and be glorified in it. And um, a friend of mine who's a, an engineer is going through this at the moment. He's very bright, very creative, started his own company, but it's been failing for about four years. But he sees himself as an engineer, you know, and he, he knows that he's got to let go of it. And God is actually going to break it off him because he cannot afford to let this man be successful because it would it would not develop good fruit in that man it would it would spoil him but God's not going to let go God's grace will achieve his purpose in him and I'm sure he will be successful in the way that God wants but only after he's let go so in summary God wants us to bear much fruit and he is an active gardener. He will prune and do whatever it takes to get the best. He gives us seeds and he wants us to plant and nurture them. But only as we allow them to die and as we die to them is he able to multiply them and be glorified. And this whole process is God's grace because Everything is actually done out of love for us. The gifts and the fruit are good, very good, and worth the effort and difficulty for the joy they bring us and him. So let's pray. Lord, at this time of harvest, we thank you for all the good things you've given us. We are enjoying the fruit of the physical harvest and now we take what you've given us, the gift you've given us, we give them back to you now with thanksgiving and ask that you would take and multiply them for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Chris. And uh, uh, to kind of reflect on all that Chris has been saying, to embed the word of God into our hearts, we have two more songs to help us in our worship. Thank you. 
breakthrough this evening as we have gathered to worship whether we've been in church or whether we've been at home very much part of the breakthrough family of God in coming together in this worship and I pray that you will feel empowered to be the church that we've been called to be in this coming week so as we end let's say the words of the grace together and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. 
Thank you for those who, uh, as part of our worship week by week, have been giving to the work of Breakthrough via the website at www.kingsdowncreekside.co.uk and go to the giving page and selecting Linstead Church as the church to give to as the home of Breakthrough. And uh, that is very much part of our act of worship together. Next week, uh, there'll be a new breakthrough service. In the coming week, uh, we continue with a live stream service of uh, Bible readings and prayers at nine o'clock every morning on uh, the Facebook page of Kingsdown and Creekside. So it's at Kingsdown Creekside or just go to that website I just mentioned and you will find at the bottom of the uh, home page of the website, uh, the Facebook page where you can access uh, the the service there each morning at nine o'clock without going to Facebook itself. May you know God's blessings and God's presence with you in this coming week. Amen. Far away, you looked upon me with your your eyes of grace, and I was a fool to think I could escape your love. You cared too much to let me go. Your presence. Like
in your hands Cause in you I found my strength Yes, in you I found my strength